what's uh, next in the agenda? Uh, next in the agenda is actually application for life and data science. So I, I guess it's a nice continuation of the Memkins. Uh, and yeah, so Leonis, the floor is yours. As they say, I have some uh, pretty uh, big shoes to fit after the, uh, the Memkins uh, presentation. <laughs> so <clears throat> uh, thank you again for this. Um, there are a few slides, but most of them are in the reference section. So I think I'm going to probably go pretty quickly through this. So um, let me share my <clears throat> screen here with you, and uh, we'll, we'll, post, uh, we'll post this later as well. So um, <clears throat> we're going to hear a little bit uh, about a different application of, of, of Jenkins. I also spoke of this uh, earlier in the um, uh, user feedback uh, session. Um, by uh, way of introduction, I'm a life science uh, research scientist um, and software engineer. I uh, have been an open source advocate and contributed for many years. I have taught graduate classes in Groovy programming, occasionally doing some uh, blogging, and these days lots of gardening in the backyard. <clears throat> um, just to frame things, uh, in 2017, we published actually an article in the scientific literature um, with the opening title Jenkins CI, and most likely people that were reading these had no idea what Jenkins CI was, but um, we continue with an open source continuous integration system as a scientific data and image processing platform. And uh, I think this is a kind of a um, un uh, use of, of Jenkins. The reason for this is that if you look at the basic uh, cycle of, of um, software publishing steps, they very closely resemble those of typical scientific data processing and analysis. And um, Jenkins has essentially all of the uh, tooling that's required to um, uh, be able to uh, do the same kind of um, steps in an analytical and life science space. So the key enablers for this is, um, at least from my point of view, the accessibility that Jenkins provides to, um, to these tools through its web portal. Uh, we use primarily the freestyle parameterized jobs. It's a rather easy deployment. Of course, it is a super rich plugin ecosystem. Groovy scripting uh, is really cool and powerful for gluing things together in a heterogeneous environment. And, um, you know, I don't want to read the entire list, but uh, there is certainly great OS community support. Uh, and that was key for me because um, I, this was my first sort of uh, um, entry into the open source community. And I found it very welcoming and very supporting, both with the Jenkins community as well as with the Bio Uno community, which was lining very well with the goals I was trying to achieve. So within this uh, context, um, Jenkins provides uh, some really significant benefits for life science, um, data management, processing, and control, as well as for data science for all kinds of, of data analysis. And um, the environment in, in, in the life sciences laboratory is, is quite complex and, and it is actually a big data science lab um, these days where uh, the labs generate huge amounts of data and they need to be transformed, parsed, and then um, analyzed. So there's a huge number of utilities, applications, custom scripts, and instrument specific um, software that you need to sort of uh, bring together to work towards this final goal. So as an integration platform, um, Jenkins is very, very successful. And you can create this uh, one-page web applications 
really cheaply. Um, reproducibility and data provenance are key in the life sciences and, and research space in general. And um, Jenkins offers both of those. Um, and uh, data management, as well as sharing and collaboration, become really um, powerful uh, within the context of, of Jenkins. So all of these things are uh, things that we propose in the paper we published. And actually, there's two manuscripts now about Jenkins in the scientific literature. You're going to find the second one in the um, in the section for um, the references. So I don't think we went through the hold on a second. I don't know why we jumped to slide seven. <clears throat> yeah, so we did this. So here is the original application that we had uh, published the, um, uh, about uh, Jenkins, and that was uh, high performance image uh, processing. Um, we have many automated microscopes that are used in um, the discovery of, of, of new drugs. Um, that they take thousands and thousands of uh, images that need to be processed and analyzed. So for the first time, um, lab scientists were able to use some of the Jenkins workflows that were built to get access to the high performance uh, clusters that we had to process these images and be able to um, analyze them themselves. Uh, while in the past, it would take weeks and weeks for people to uh, wait for some software engineer to uh, queue their uh, images on the cluster and, and, and run the image analysis software to do. So right now we'll provide them with a very simple um, a dashboard where they can go and, and do a bunch of, of uh, um, analysis and, and management uh, tasks on the cluster through Jenkins. Um, Another application is for data management, and uh, Jenkins is really, really cool uh, and powerful at doing that. Um, a lot of the data that's produced in the lab uh, comes as uh, delimited uh, uh, data that is very amenable to uh, SQL querying and, and um, uh, transformation, all of that stuff. And um, basically, uh, we have many jobs that deal with this kind of data. And I will show you an example, but basically these jobs also use uh, an embedded H2 uh, Java database um, that sort of uh, fire apps on, on demand, does the analysis, and then dies as, as the build finishes. So they can use essentially Jenkins as a um, IDE to do SQL queries, and then the results from these queries are saved and managed in, in Jenkins. Um, similarly, we have a lot of need for image and data annotation and review. Um, and I will show you a couple examples where we have integrated some of the build forms with um, JavaScript uh, high resolution viewers that allow us to uh, view images, but um, also as well, you know, um, integrate a lot of uh, interactive uh, views, reports, and analysis. Into, into Jenkins. Uh, one of the key aspects of using Jenkins for, for life sciences and data science is the interactivity of the user interface with the, um, uh, with the data, uh, responding to changes in selections that the user is making and so on. And I know that this is not of a huge interest to uh, the Jenkins community, and it was totally lacking back in 2000 and um, uh, 13, when I came in contact with the Biono organization, um, and I described what I needed. And at, at that point, um, my colleague Bruno Kinoshida, who is in New Zealand now, uh, built this really cool uh, Jenkins Active Choices plugin. Originally, it was distributed through Biono. Now, it's from the Jenkins repository with over 24,000 um, installs. And it provides really cool dynamic and cascading build parameters uh, that use Groovy scripts. And they also can return um, dynamic HTML. So we can enrich the build forms 
um, with um, HTML. So I'm going to show you an example of, of what you can do um, <clears throat> with the uh, active choices. Here we're using the script plugin, Groovy, the H2 embedded, RFD, BMS, and JavaScript. So we're essentially a query for data in the um, H2 database by <clears throat> selecting the um, certain values that we want to um, search for in the data. And uh, here we have sort of the two query plan terms, and you can delete them, reset them, and change them as, as you wish by, um, and all this is in the uh, Jenkins um, build form. Okay. <clears throat> so this was one example, and here's a little bit, um, There we go. A little bit more uh, visually pleasing. This is using an interactive um, uh, viewer based on the OpenSea Dragon JavaScript. This is called a deep zoom viewer and is used specifically for scientific images. Um, this particular form integrates uh, Scripler, Groovy, and images that are coming in from a so called Cantaloupe Triple F image server where it's very powerful allows you to to zoom pan the images and as you will see in a second it allows us also to um overlay images because that's important we have multi-channel images that need to be overlaid so we can see the same cell in two different channels so you can see the nuclei of the cells are blue the cytoplasm is is green so all of that interaction happens in the uh, jenkins interface uh, for the job, we can adjust the, um, uh, the opacity and everything else and, and do all those cool things, uh, basically using uh, a couple um, uh, Jenkins plugins. So that's it. Um, I just uh, you know want to thank a bunch of people here, uh, both for my work. Uh, interestingly enough, as I said, my boss is called Jeremy Jenkins, um, and uh, actually he has uh, accepted the the Jenkins icon. He uses quite a bit in his uh, um, sort of where he needs to put his picture sometimes, and of course you know the community here um, and. Uh, by own organization and last summer we built this um, um, really cool machine learning plugin for for Jenkins I've met many of you um, then again and um, um, at the end I have put a, a number of references that uh, when I post a slide you can just uh, uh, go through them and um, see a few more calls and uh, cool things that we can do with uh, Jenkins for data science so I'll, I'll be happy if you have any any questions or <clears throat> any other things to discuss. So, how are you doing the graph rendering? Those those graphs are amazing. Are those JGraph? What's what's at your what's at the core of that? So, um, there's a number of, of things that we're using. There's uh, also um, a BioUno R plugin. What I'm showing you right now actually is a bunch of um, uh, PNGs that were generated out of the R statistical language. Got it. Okay. However, the, the things I was showing you earlier, the dynamic images of the cells and so on, those are based on these um, uh, deep zoom JavaScript viewer called Open Sea Dragon. Uh, I have some references to it. Um, so we incorporate the JavaScript uh, viewer, and then the data is uh, queried and uh, prepared by the Jenkins queries and everything else to, to come in and, and, and show it there. So we, full, we use the full um, uh, strength of you know, JavaScript or the you know, Python and R, whatever is generating graphics. Yeah, and, and uh, this particular plugin that I'm showing you here is 
uh, called the summary plugin, uh, which creates uh, tab tables in, um, I mean, tab uh, sort of, yeah, tabular uh, forms in the uh, report uh, stage of, of Jenkins. So you can get um, this kind of view. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, despite we uh, like a standard software developing uh, team, uh, I can see uh, the use case of such uh, advanced uh, uh, parameterized uh, Jenkins builds, because uh, usually we have some validation cycles like nightly, weekly cycle, but sometimes developers want to run something custom against their PRs to make sure everything is okay uh, in the scope which we can't uh, execute during uh, pre-commit builds. And uh, we always got complaints uh, that our jobs are not so parameter of our jobs are, aren't so intuitive. So I think with these plugins, we can uh, maybe create some more intuitive interface, maybe retrieve some parameters dynamically. But uh, uh, does this, can we use this in Jenkins pipeline or is it only in freestyle jobs? So originally when we developed this, and this was, uh, you know, a lot of questions about whether you can use these um, in, in Jenkins pipelines. Uh, we said you cannot because essentially we we're manipulating the the, the Java the, um, uh, the the UI form elements, trying to discover what these uh, parameters were sending back. Uh, but more recent releases of the Active Choices plugin do support now pipeline jobs. So mm -hmm. you you might take a, a look at that. Um, because he's moving in that direction. And I think also recently when Jenkins moved from the, um, what was it, the, the table uh, forms to the divs, um, uh, we have also adopted these to, to work with this in, in, in um, work. There. Mm -hmm. So um, we're moving with the evolution of, of Jenkins. But as I said earlier, um, you know, we're also worried a little bit about um, what we're doing here because uh, a lot of the interactivity is because of inline JavaScript, um, is because of Groovy execution within the build form. And we know that these things always kind of ca cause uh, security issues and concerns. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Welcome, Andrew. Okay, uh, thank you. So we have a few more